Welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. Last time we beat the Bandity place and rescued Sage McDooderson, the guy who had the Sand Rod. The Sand Rod has since been returned to Ravio despite my best intentions. Which means we can go back in here and actually rent it. Sure will. I'm just gonna buy it straight up. And, you know, I have an amount of money left. I'm also going to buy this. And that leaves us with, honestly, just two things left that we have to buy. Um, an upgrade to the upgrade to the tornado rod, I know, makes it so when you do the spin thing, it actually hurts enemies within it. I may actually hold off on doing that, if only because I like using the Tornado Rod for game-breaking reasons. The upgrade to the Boomerang makes it go we're going uh, back and forth across the whole screen. Of course, we don't have enough money for either of those, but uh, we'll get to them eventually. Ah, guy! Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up! Put that crap in that bottle! That is a golden bee, my friend, and that is the luckiest I have been in a very long time. Uh, you know what? Let's just go take care of this bee right now. Bee house, bee house. There you are. Bee house. This is purely a um, an optional thing in the game, but it is kind of neat to have. The Bee Badge. Yes, now we have the Bee Badge. This is a passive piece of gear, so it actually has nothing to do with an item you have to equip or anything like that. And now that we have it, Anytime um, we cut a bush or whatever and a bee comes out, it will no longer attack you. It'll be friendly. And by friendly, I mean it will turn around and wreck everything else on the screen. Completely optional, not that important, but kind of a nice little thing to have. We've also collected a couple of Mai Mais, so let's go turn in some of them. I'm gonna make the sand rod nicer. I don't even know what it does. Like, I don't know what the improvement is. But all I know is I like it. I like whatever it is that it does. Also looks kind of cool. Okay, hammer, bombs, or ice rod. Only the three. Let's go ahead and make bombs better, I guess. 
When you make bombs better, the bomb itself appears to be larger, and the explosion radius is much larger as well. That was 50, so sh we should be able to power up one last thing. And between the hammer and the ice rod... I'm gonna go with the hammer because I actually, I honest to goodness, find the ice rod power-up more troublesome than anything. Yay! And just the two. Because what the power up to, I, or what for one, what the power up hammer does is it has a larger radius. Like look at the size of that crap. What the powered up ice rod does is the ice rod itself drops a block in front of you like that. This is actually sort of important for later on. But um, the powered up ice rod instead drops four in front of you, and I just find it a lot harder to actually get the block where I want it to be doing that. But with all that said, we are now prepped and ready to go. Oh, um, something else that I didn't really explain earlier, but um, all of the items on the item screen down below, you can actually move around. Like, I hated how convoluted and, like, everything's just there in the order that I got it and I can't find anything. You can't actually move them around. Just drag them over and put them where you want them to be. I like putting all my bottles along the right side and then I'll put all the stuff that doesn't use up my Ravio energy just over there next to it. Um, beyond that, I think everything else here is actually Ravio powered. Um, I will potentially not use the boomerang much, so I move the boomerang down there, have the two rods up top. I won't be using the nice bow outside of specific situations, but um, everything else I'll go ahead and leave as is ordered. And in the meantime, let's go ahead and grab you. Hey, rude. And be on our way. Actually, we need to head back to Low Rule. Maybe this will be a short video because I may not actually get to do much between what we've covered already. But we're heading to Misery Mire. We still need to rescue Irene. Because this is where we're going next. And now that we have the sand rod, we can actually go in here. Now that we have the sand rod, there's a number of things we can do. Um, even exploration-wise, there's more we can do. Alright, come at me. Even exploration-wise, there's a couple things we can do. That right there is what the sand rod does, which is kind of nice. Use the sand rod to lay down these squares. And they'll create a barrier. You can walk on top of this barrier, and you can even painting yourself onto it. Nice stuff. But now that we have this, though, we can actually do some a couple interesting things explorative-wise, but I'm going to wait until after this next dungeon in order to actually do a lot of that. Now, if you recall, in Low Rule, there was uh, something over here. Not of terrible, not like of progress niceness, but a heart piece, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. 
And now we can actually go make progress proper. Go places, do the things. Dumb bird. There's a little platform over here, so let's uh, make our way over to that one. We're a little higher up than the other platform, so we can just walk across this now. Dumb bird. And hey, another low rule portal. This dungeon actually, not well not this dungeon, the entrance to this dungeon actually has you going in and out of the portals a lot just to get around. Ah, uh, this is going to be a bad idea, but I'm going to do it anyway just because it's funny. Alright, dude. What's up, dude? No, come here. Come here. Um, this is a pretty hefty glitch that you can do, and a good speedrunner can actually abuse this to some really nice end. No, dude. Dude. Right here. Dude. Right here. I'm just gonna have to move him manually. So I need to get this guy. But again, a good speedrunner can um, actually use this to skip the entire next dungeon. In, like, boss included, everything can be skipped. Um, that's gonna be a little... I can't do that! I've not practiced enough, I haven't messed with this enough, but, um, interesting thing that you can do here. I'm gonna at least try to do something dumb. Nope, didn't do it right. I need this guy to... I need to, like... No... I need this guy to get in that crack as hard as he can, and then I need to get hit and knock him into it. Yee! <laughs> Alright. Again, a good speedrunner can use that to abuse a... like, can actually use it to get on top of this wall, and then some fun is to be had. I'm not going to break the game that bad, though. I'm going to actually go through the dungeon. Oh dear. I kind of want you back. Ah! Ah! Man! Okay, let's try this again. Sup, dude? Make our way back to Hyrule again, only this time we're going there in... We're, go we're going there under my own terms. You can go either up or, um... Yeah, kill that bird. So he's just not a problem at all. You can go this way, but you can't really get much out of it. Well, actually, no, I can do this. I suppose that skips an amount of pooing around. You can also go up instead of going this way. Um, I'm gonna go back and go up the go up because I think there's something I can get over there. That was awkward. No, um, it's you get nothing out of it. You get not a couple of rupees. That's what you get out of it. There's a my my like right around here though. There you are. Yeah, getting in my mice. And of course, hey, how you doing? That should be the final weather vane. You don't tell me what to do, bird. That should be the final weather vane, and we should now have access to every remaining dungeon, because now we can walk in the Desert Palace. Just like we remember just like we remember it from Link to the Past. He a complete with additional head and thing in the wall behind it. 
Until next time, everyone. I'm sure this video is maybe a little bit short, but it's... There's certainly not enough time for me to delve into this next dungeon. So, until next time, everyone. <laughs>